So in this video, we're gonna be talking about my GNOME desktop, why I chose that desktop environment, and then we're gonna jump onto the computer and actually configure the thing to look exactly how I like it. So first, why GNOME or GNOME? There are two main reasons. One is simplicity and two is the actual aesthetics of the thing. It's not really overloaded with a ton of features and customizations out of the box, but all the features that it does have works perfectly for me and works exactly how I like interacting with a computer. Now, a lot of people who watch these videos love tiling window managers, and I do too in some cases. But for the most part, my workflow tends to gear towards having two or three windows open in a workspace slightly overlap. And I just kind of click in between them like so as I'm moving from application to application. Occasionally, I'll snap them to the sides, but this right here is just how I like to work. And this does translate even when I use a tiling window manager, for example. I always have the big window on half the screen, two quarter windows, and some dramatic gaps. And the GNOME shell itself is a huge part of my workflow as when my workspace gets a little too messy, I could just go ahead and throw my mouse into the top corner, see everything, and then easily organize my windows into different workspaces depending on what I'm trying to get accomplished. Now, yes, when it comes to this workflow, you can achieve it on basically all of the desktop environments or even window managers out there, but all this functionality accompanied with the clean aesthetics of the desktop is why I love it. And it's at this point that I'm going to get the absolute most subjective. The default look of GNOME just looks way better than the default look of almost any other desktop environment out there. In my opinion, most of them look just outdated or look like a just apparent Windows knockoff. Granted, GNOME does kind of look like a Mac OS ripoff, but I'm merely a uh, Apple fanboy in disguise? <laughs> Not really, just the laptops. Granted, these are the defaults I'm talking about. With some work and time, you can make just about any of them look phenomenal. And I've done it in the past. I have a few other customization videos for other desktops in which I was able to make that look super good. And they just recently fixed that little shadow bug that was around the rounded window corners, which is very nice. That was a gripe of mine. So that's basically why I picked this desktop environment after using so many for so many years. It's just what I settled on. Granted, that doesn't mean I'm never gonna try any other ones again. Part of what I do here is forcing myself to try just about everything I possibly can. Now with all that, like I said, I still do customize my GNOME desktop environment. As for me, it's the definitely the closest one when it comes to just the default out of the box experience, but it's still not quite there. I don't really add themes or icons anymore, but there are some really beautiful ones that I do recommend, so check that link down below. And there'll also be a separate tutorial on how to enable custom themes and icons. In this video, we're gonna be focusing on the, really the only thing I do, and that is adding and customizing some very important extensions. And we're gonna be able to highlight an application too in this video, because we're gonna be doing this with GNOME extensions, which recently has had a rather impressive update. So before we go ahead and jump onto the desktop and actually get this going, we are going to need to thank the sponsor of today's video, which happens to be Linode. Linode is a fantastic way to host various things, whether it be your personal websites, game servers, various open source software packages that you can install using their incredibly easy one-click installer. Some of these may include Mattermost for project management, Nextcloud for some file sharing, WordPress for your website, and then end it all off by setting up one of many easily available game servers. They have fantastic customer support plans. Start as low as $5 a month for a shared CPU, but better yet, you can get yourself a $100 60-day credit by using the code TECA or the link down below. It's basically free money. All right, so here we are on my desktop and you can see it is not customized that much, but it's just enough where I think it is beautiful compared to stock at least. We have some nice transparency. You saw that within the GNOME shell here. This dock on the bottom looks absolutely awesome. And we have some little additions that just give us more information about things that we care about. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm doing a lot of this with the extension manager application right here. Let's go ahead and give that an open. And before we actually dive into these extensions that I'm using, I just want to kind of highlight this application. It is remarkable. You have browse here, so you can actually search and find your extensions directly through the application. Instead of having to go to the website with an extension enabled and all that, this is just much better. And one thing I really like about it is this new feature right here, the upgrade assistant. Right now I'm running GNOME 42, which is a little bit behind what is currently out, which is 43. And if I wanted to see if the extensions that I'm using are going to be working for this, 
I would just click check and then it will go ahead and spit out a number. I am 77% compatible. The user installed, all of them are good, which is awesome, including Dash to Dock, which historically has been kind of slower to getting updated. And when it comes to everything else, the application volume mixer is unsupported, that's fine. Background logo, I don't use anyway. And down here, the only other application that is not supported is the sound input and device chooser, which is completely fine because with GNOME 43, they went ahead and added a beautiful kind of toggle button with a little drop down that you can actually do that directly through the base install, which is wonderful when they add features that extensions for ever needed to be the uh, substitute for. So if you're somebody who's running GNOME, this is definitely a must have application. Now with that, the actual extensions that I am using, we're gonna kinda go from top to bottom here. You can see there's a lot of stuff that was pre-included with this uh, Nobara desktop, but personally, I'm not using much of them. We have the sound input device chooser, which just, like I said, is not going to be needed because this is what gives me the availability to pick my output and input devices that is going to be included. So it doesn't matter that that's not getting updated because I'll no longer need to use it. Pop shell is really cool if you like tiling windows, I'll link to a video below or actually on the eye just now if you want to check that out. But up here we have desktop icons. This makes the whole desktop much more usable as a workspace. You can see I have a little uh, folder of my wallpapers here. And if we go ahead and click the gear on any of these extensions, you're gonna get a good amount of customization options to just make it much better. And frankly, a lot of these extensions, I'm for the most part using a lot of just the default settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that out. Next up, we have Clipboard History, a phenomenal application. I went ahead and cleared it so you can't see what I've been copying and pasting. There's a, a few passwords in there, but you can search your history, go back and forth between pages to see everything you've been copying and pasting. There's a private mode. And then of course we could go into our clipboard history settings, which again, for me, I basically have everything on the default and there are some awesome little keyboard shortcuts. Now, moving on from there, we have probably the second most important thing to me. And that is blur my shell. That's what gives it this really nice aesthetic here. And you can kind of get a better idea of everything you could actually do with this by going, of course, to the configuration here. There's a lot of stuff going on. We have the intensity of the blur, the brightness, the color, the noise amount, which you can see I just have a little touch of noise. And a lot of this stuff updates right away. So you can actually play around with this number by number really figure out what you like. For example, if I go dramatic with the noise here, you can see this top bar kind of looks like crap. Now, if I go over here, you can see what that looks like. Maybe that's for you, but uh, I just like just a little dash of that. And actually we could play around with this. So if I did bump this up just a little more, I can increase the lightness too. So you could see what that does to it. And you can just really fine tune these things to make it perfect for you. And then of course we have more settings, particular to the panel here on the top. We have overview settings. So if you didn't want the blur, but you wanted all the other options, you could go ahead and enable that. And then application blur as well as an option. The dash right here, this is important. I have this disabled because it kind of interferes with the dash to dock application. You can see if I go ahead and enable this, it gives me these ugly corners, kind of similar to that old KDE bug that I mentioned earlier, but that's really the only interference that I've noticed just to enable that and you are good to go. And obviously if you weren't using this, you'd probably want to actually keep this enabled because in the activities menu, this is where you would actually be able to customize it because it's going to show up in here no matter what. But again, I'm going to disable that. We have some application settings and of course other, which goes into lock screen, screenshot and window list extension blurring, which again, for the most part, I have set to all the default. Application volume mixer is kind of cool. It just gives you the availability to change volume levels on an application by application basis. And I don't really have audio streaming, so I'm not really able to show that off. We have app indicator and case status notification support. Just gives us the availability and ability to go ahead and customize this if we would like to. And then it gets on or moves us on to the user installed extensions here. User themes, again, I'm not really using this, but I do have this installed because occasionally I'll get a wild hair and want to install like the Bimix theme or something like that. And just having this available and ready is awesome. And you could actually change the themes through here if you'd like to, instead of using the GNOME tweak tool. Now, open weather is an absolute must. There actually is, if I do recall, within the standard thing here, if I go ahead and select weather location, let's go ahead and do this real quick and see what it looks like. This is just something I haven't done yet. So Spokane International Airport's fairly close to me. So if I added that, there we go. And th this too is actually a really pretty application. And then I click on this. 
So there we go. We do have some weather here. So if this is good enough for you, you can keep that. But personally, I prefer something a little more like this, where it's going to give me very extensive detail with a, something as simple as a little mouse hover, all the way down to the humidity, air pressure, and things like that. And of course, I don't even have to do anything to see the weather as it's just going to display right up here in the top bar. And with that, it takes us to the very last application, which I've touched on a little bit, and that is the dash to dock. I spend about half of my time in Mac OS and just having something like this is just what I'm used to using. And of course, if we go to settings, we have various things to go ahead and customize and change this exactly as we'd like. Intelligent auto hide is one of my favorite things. Just move a window close to it and it'll automatically go away pull it away and it comes back up. Very nice. In addition, we have the positioning, icon sizes, and a lot more. Launchers here is nice, so we'll throw the windows you have open here on the bottom, and we can go ahead and change some more things. So if I wanted to show the trash can, I could go ahead and do that. For me, the icon's kind of screwed up. Don't know what's going on there. So I just keep that one disabled. And of course, if we go ahead and mount a volume or device, it will also pop up down there, which is very handy. We have some behavior settings. So for example, if I open up a couple uh, web browser windows here, we have the Nobrero page and this default Firefox page. If I go ahead, bring this up and just click on Firefox, it will just swap in between the two windows. And then probably the most important, at least to me, is uh, appearance. I do not enable the built-in theme because to me that just doesn't look good. Kind of the whole point of the uh, Blur My Shell extension is because I don't really like this look. I like the nice, good, transparent kind of glass thing going on here. And then of course I have docks and my uh, default opacity, but of course we can dynamic that and change it and do really do whatever we want. But for the most part, that's really all my customization. I don't use too many special applications. I use a lot of the GNOME default stuff. Down here you can see I have Firefox, file, software, Discord. I use this to connect to my uh, Windows 11 Proxmox machine. We have Steam, OBS, GIMP. Caden Live, the just regular default terminal application, which if we do feel so inclined, I can Neo fetch this up and we can look at exactly what is going on on my system if you are interested in that, which I do actually believe that this is new. It's kind of cool he added that. Let's close this out. And then I use Audacity for some audio correction here and there and FileZilla is just an absolute S tier application. And really that's the bulk of my Linux desktop, exactly how I went ahead and customized everything. It's really not too extensive, but for me it's beautiful and I don't personally find a need to change anything at this point. Granted this is my favorite distribution, there's actually a, a a new thing coming out called Vanilla OS, which I'm going to be installing on this machine and using for a little while. So then I can make a video on release so I actually know what I'm talking about. So make sure you subscribe and you ring that bell so you do not miss that video. And that really covers it. I now have a video to link to people who ask what my desktop is. So thanks Linode for sponsoring this video and thank you for subscribing to the Tech Hut newsletter well, we'll be kind of rounding up the Linux and just general open source technology news on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. You can subscribe with any of our website links down below. There'll be a little subscribe button in the bottom right corner. Click that, put in your email, your name, whatever you want, and life is beautiful. And with that, I do hope you have a beautiful day and goodbye.